I, I mean, don't get me wrong. The Sistine Chapel is fine, right, as far as ceilings go. But it's getting knocked down a peg on the profound and beautiful images of creation presented on ceilings list every time a planetarium projects the James Webb image of the Carina Nebula from now on. Right, like, I, I mean, no disrespect to Michelangelo here. He had a pretty solid imagination and all, but nobody in the 16th century could have imagined how beautiful and awesome creation really is. And we were reminded of that in stunning fashion on Tuesday when the first handful of images from the new space telescope were revealed. They were visually exquisite, yes, obviously, but their, but their beauty was like the seventh most incredible thing about them. We peered through dust clouds that used to be opaque to us. We measured things that used to be unknowable. We saw further back in time than we've ever seen before. In just half a dozen images, we were shown in the starkest possible way, the way that this new observatory is going to advance the threshold of human knowledge. Now, you can learn a lot about technique, history, theology, and aesthetics from studying the Sistine Chapel ceiling. You can probably learn a hell of a lot more than that. But you're never going to use it to measure the Hayashi limit or determine the minimum mass requirements for star formation. Yeah, look, I I've talked before on this show about how formative the Hubble Space Telescope was on my path towards rationalism. I was never really religious, so I don't have a becoming an atheist journey so much as a discarding pseudoscience journey. And seeing those first images in my fuck am I old, in my early 20s was a big part of the impetus to start down that road in the first place. I actually did a whole diatribe about it way back on episode eight, and gazing into those first glimpses of the James Webb was a potent reminder of the awe that inspired me back then. And it was a lot of fucking awe. I don't mind saying that I first saw several of those images through the lens of tears. The one that really stood out to me, both aesthetically and scientifically, though, was the one that they're calling the Cosmic Cliffs. It's the one of the diaphanous curtain of interstellar gas with its Baroque topography carved by a retreat from the relentless blistering radiation of newborn stars, defiant pillars rising from the cosmic palisades like the fingers of galactic giants, all of it set against the vast and sparkling void of infinity. So, <laughs> sorry, it's the one that looks like a mountain ridge. I know, I should just say that. It looks like a mountain ridge. But holy hell, how do you look at that motherfucker and not bust out the $10 words? Not only is this a gorgeous picture that you could get lost in for hours, but it's also a perfect exemplar of what makes this particular telescope so valuable. We imaged the same area with the Hubble, but the gas and interstellar dust were too thick to see through in the visible light spectrum. James Webb is an infrared telescope, though, so it can see through those barriers to the stars beyond. In this one picture, the edge of our knowledge literally recedes before us. When our ancestors thought of creation, they broke out their very best stories. They strained the limits of their imagination to the breaking point. But we've seen where sons are really born, and we know that nothing they thought of could compare to the real thing. When they looked to the stars in the heavens, they peopled them with the greatest heroes they could think of, the more, their most fanciful imaginings. But when you look at the vastness contained in the web's first deep field image, you realize that every grain of the sky contains more heroes and monsters than all the mythologies our world could ever sire. What was really out there was a vastness so overwhelming their gods would cower before it. It's a vastness so profound their notions of God can't even be reconciled with it. The universe is literally too big for their God to fit into. And that's something that we could only discover when we stopped looking for God and started looking beyond him. 